Hey there, before we get started, I wanted to take a second to say that this video was brought to you by LogRocket, a front-end performance monitoring solution. If you like this video and want us to keep making more like this one, all you have to do is click on any of the links in the top right of this video to sign up for a free trial. That's it. We hope you enjoy the video. Hello and welcome. In today's video, we look into the single-threaded nature of Node.js and how multi-threading can be achieved by using several strategies. When Brendan Eich first created the JavaScript language, it was not the multi-talented beast that it is today. JavaScript was merely a utility to add interactions to your web page and to sometimes perform certain validations. All the JavaScript code running on a single thread did not pose as a shortcoming at that time, let alone a hindrance to performance. But as the use case associated with the language slowly got more and more complex, things started to change. In 2009, Ryan Dahl created Node.js, wherein he took the V8 JavaScript engine from Chrome and wrapped it in a bundle that could communicate with the operating system to perform asynchronous I.O. and other related operations. But even at that time, instead of introducing a multi-threadedness into the ecosystem, he thought of leveraging the single-threaded nature of JavaScript by implementing an event-based architecture for the Node server. What that means is, all the JavaScript code that is running as a part of the Node server runs in a single thread, whereas everything else can practically run in parallel. Whenever an I.O. operation is to be performed, the operation is initiated via an API and a callback is registered. The callback is invoked by the API when the async operation completes. Till then, the JavaScript block of code keeps executing synchronously. Usually, this synchronous JS code runs quite fast and majority of times it is a case that the engine keeps waiting for the callback to get triggered after having executed all the synchronous code in the call stack. So, there doesn't seem to be a need for spawning a thread in this case. Let's consider this code for example. We are trying to run an SQL query. Even though the time it takes to execute that query is 10 seconds, the node server is not stalled. The find1 API here accepts the query to be executed and the callback to be fired once done. Once the line of code calling that API is executed, query run will happen in a separate context. The synchronous execution continues and the next line of console.log which says running query is printed immediately. Similar case with the timeout. Once the set timeout API executes, a callback is registered for after 1000 milliseconds and the main JavaScript thread does not have anything else to process. Then once 1000 milliseconds pass, the callback runs and hey there is displayed onto the console. Later. When the query completes execution, the callback is fired and the result is console logged. All this happened without ever bogging down the main JS thread. That sorts out our concern with respect to asynchronous I.O. But what about the tasks in the synchronous JavaScript main thread itself that take a long long time to execute? Here is an example. Let's say that the result has a million entries and decrypt is a decryption function which is CPU intense and also not available as an async API, thus runs on the main thread. In that case, if this function took 5 seconds to execute, no other JavaScript code can execute for those many seconds. And this is usually one of the use cases where we can contemplate about the feasibility of a multi-threaded solution to the problem. On that note, if you find yourself constantly striving to improve the performance of not just your backend but your overall app, then you'd want to give our sponsors LogRocket a try. LogRocket is the front-end application monitoring solution that allows you to see why your bugs are happening. LogRocket shows you your user's network activity, their console logs, errors, as well as the Redux store. You'll get to experience your bugs just like your users do. So. Check out LogRocket at the link in the top right of this video to get 14 days for free. So now that we have proved there is a use case where 
threads can come in handy, let us explore their alternatives before discussing the solution that uses the worker thread module. We can use the set immediate node API to effectively split an intense synchronous task into several smaller chunks as shown in this code. Let's see how that is being done. Firstly, let's understand what the set immediate API actually does. Basically, whenever we call set immediate and pass it a function, it will make sure that the function executes in the next iteration of the Node.js event loop. If you don't have much idea about the Node event loop, just keep in mind that it is just like a cycle wherein Node executes the currently running function until the function stack is empty, then handles connections, callbacks, timers, etc. in what is known as phases of the event loop. Thus, calling set immediate in this way ensures that any callbacks, timers that are pending and blocked by the synchronous code currently being executed gets the time to execute. And after that, during the next cycle, the synchronous code is invoked again. Notice how we are defining the array outside of the function scope here so that it is not created afresh every time. Also, we are taking out 10 items from the array and performing the heavy operation on them after which we call set immediate. Thus, 10 items keep getting removed and processed until the array finally becomes empty and the job is done. Although the task is accomplished, there are rarely any scenarios in real life wherein a task can be split so easily into independent chunks as shown in this example. Another way of achieving a multi-threaded behavior is through processes. Just like the node code is running inside of a process which gets time scheduled on the CPU, we can create new processes. That is, we can fork the current process so as to run other intense code on it. The fork process will not share any memory with the original process and hence the data to be processed as well as the calculated result will have to be communicated between the processes via messages. But here's the thing. Forking a process and creating a new one is considered to be quite a heavy operation. It's slow, requires resources on the CPU side, and allocates a basic quota of memory to the process irrespective of whether it is getting utilized or not. In addition to that, forking just one process is not the solution to our problem. We will need to create multiple processes in order to perform multiple tasks in parallel. So, the initial effort gets multiplied that many times. Also, if any of the fork processes gets killed for any reason, the data never comes back. A solution is to keep with us a pool of processes, just like a pool of database connections, which we can keep reusing. This is where a worker farm comes into the picture. Here are the code snippets that enable us to use worker farms. The one on the left is the main code which is invoking several worker processes and passing inputs to them. The one on the right is the code that will get executed in the forked process and invoke the callback that returns the computed data back to the original process. An important feature of worker farms worth noting here is that in case any worker gets killed before returning the data, worker farm makes sure that the missed data is computed by another worker and the result is returned back to the original process. Hence, we do not miss any result. Hey there, it's me again. Just wanted to take a second to say that this video is brought to you by LogRocket, a front-end performance monitoring solution. If you like this video and would like us to keep doing ones like it, all you have to do is click on any of the links in the top right of this video to sign up for a free trial. That's it. We hope you enjoy the video. Although, we have got our required solution in the form of worker farm, there is still a small issue. Each worker created by worker farm is a full-fledged process and hence uses way more memory than a multi-threaded solution would. So let us finally explore the solution using worker threads module. Worker threads are available in all the latest node version from 10.5.0 onwards. In order to use them, you will need to set 
the experimental worker feature flag while starting the node process. After that, worker threads can be imported into the code as follows. Here is how the function on the main thread invoking the different threads would look like. In this example, we are promisifying the API which is event based by design. First, a new promise is created and inside that, an instance of a worker is being created. The worker gets passed two arguments. First is a file from where the code will be executed in the thread and second is the data to be passed to the thread. Also, we are listening to message and error events from the thread and in response to that, resolving or rejecting the promise respectively. And that's all that needs to be done to create threads and run code on them. Coming to the code inside of the threads, we are restructuring worker data and parent port from the worker threads library. Whatever the resource intense computation that is supposed to be done is also imported. The result is calculated by executing the function on the data we received from the main thread. Once complete, parent post is used in order to post a message back to the main thread and the result is passed back. As we saw earlier, the main thread is already waiting for the on message event which will receive this result. And that's all. We have successfully computed the resource intense synchronous operation on an external thread without affecting the user experience and the latency of the main thread. And that's all for today's video. We looked into how Node efficiently executes code when it comes to async I.O. and also explored some methods to enhance performance when it comes to executing synchronous CPU intense code. Hope you liked the video. See you in the next one. Till then, happy learning.